بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم with the name of Allah, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. Alhamdulillahi lavi ja'ala salata adhama shara'il islam. All praise is due to Allah who has made the prayer of great importance in the laws of al-Islam. Wa wa'ala man hafafa and had promised whoever gods over them a reward of good and abundance in this world and in the house of peace. Bil uku bitil mukta now wa ati wa illa lam. And he had warned him who squanders or waste them of a painful suffering of various forms. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallahu thu jalali wa ikram. I witnessed that there is nothing worthy of worship except for Allah full of mounty, a mighty bounty and is generous. Wa ashadu anna sayyadina Muhammad Rasulillahi sayyadina al nam And I witness that our leader Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and the leader of mankind. Allahumma salla wa salam ala sayyadina Muhammadin wa ala Alihi wa ashabil bararatil kiram. O Allah, the prayers and the peace be upon Muhammad, his family and his companion, the dutiful and the generous. I'm a bad. And what follows of this noble salute. Dear Muslim brothers and sisters who are listening to us via uh, uh, Facebook. We want to greet you all with the greetings of peace. As-salamu alaykum Ramadan Mubarak. This is the day of Juma. And our prophet has said that this is the best of days. And we have come to prayer today seeking hikmah and barakah, the wisdom and the blessings from Almighty God. So on the best day, in the best month, again we say Ramadan Mubarak. In the Holy Quran, in Surah 2 and Ayat 183, and I know that we're all familiar with this Ayat, where Allah says, Ya Ayyuhalamina Amanu Kutiba Alaykumusiyamu. Wakamaki tiba ala lavina min kaplikum la ailekum tetakum. O you who believe, fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you, that ye may learn self restraint and, as some say, God consciousness. During the month of Ramadan, for many of us, our focus is on fasting or abstaining from food and drink. And we become too conscious of holding back on food and drink during this time. And we overlook the fact that during this month, our focus should be not only on what we are to hold back from, but it should be on what we are to do more of. Or the things that was intensify and strengthen us in our spirit. We don't eat or drink during the daylight hours. This symbolizes, brothers and sisters, that abstaining from this food and drink during the daylight hour is letting us know that we abstain from the things that this world invites us to 
or the things that this world would feed us. And this world not only invite us to physical food, chicken and potatoes and things of that sort, but it also invites us to the things that weaken us in our moral and spiritual life as well. The world of shaitan invites us to so many things, things that Allah has asked us to stay away from. And because we are weak in the flesh, as Yusuf Ali implies, we have to have a safety valve to protect us. But I want to say that we are not really weak in the flesh. Because you can go to any gym in Memphis and you can see men and women who are extremely strong physically or in the flesh. But I say that we are weak in our resolve or in our ability to make up our mind between doing what's right or doing what's wrong. <coughs> but people who are strong in the flesh, they can also be weak in their resolve. During the month of Ramadan, we have to ask ourselves, am I going to only abstain from the world or am I going to strive to strengthen my resolve, my ability to make the right decision? But if we don't get food from the world from the day in the during the daylight, then where will we get our substance? Substance. In the Holy Quran, in the Surah is 5, in the Ayat 115, Allah says this. It's called Hawariyuna Ya Isapna Mayama Hel Yastati U Rabbuka and you Nazila Alena Maidatan Menesamai Kalet Takulaha in Kuntum Mukminum. And it translates. Behold, the disciples said, O Jesus, the son of Mary, can thy Lord send down to us a, a table set with viands from heaven? Jesus said, Fear Allah if ye have faith. Now there are two words that we want to take time out to look at. The first one is Yunazaleh. This word is from Nazaleh which means to send down. But this word is used by Allah in most instances to refer to revelation. Now there are other words like Razala, which means to send a message, Abatha, which means he sent. But we see that these words mean sent in another way. <coughs> the next word that we want to look at is Maida which has been translated a table set with food from heaven, viand. And this word means special choices of food. But this word maida, it also means knowledge. And knowledge, as we know, brothers and sisters, is a spiritual food, meaning that knowledge is not physical. Now, we don't get our physical food from heaven, from up there. Our physical food comes out of the earth. So the disciples were asking for a spiritual food. And our spiritual food comes from heaven or from on high. So during the month of Ramadan, we feed from on high. We are not to abstain from spiritual food. No, we are to become greedy for what Allah has on his table. And that is what will give us the self-restraint. Ramadan, brothers and sisters, is not as much a physical fast as it is a spiritual fast. Ramadan is a spiritual discipline. When we are busy eating from Allah's table, we don't even think about the physical food. Our thoughts are on Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if we keep the discipline of the fast, this will help us gain self-restraint. 
The object of the fast is to become more God conscious. And perhaps then all of our sins would be forgiven during this month. You know, if we were able to leave out food and drink for a whole year, but we are not being fed from the level revelation sent down by Almighty God, and we are still using foul language and backbiting, our sins will not be forgiven. They will only be multiplied. Again, we'll go to the Holy Quran and the Surah is 3 and Ayat is 172, where Allah says, Al-Ladinas Tajabu Lillahi wa Rasuli min badi ma ashabahu mulha lilladina asanu minhum wa taqa ajrun adin of those who answer the call now this word tajabu is the word translated as answer but this word, brothers and sisters, it also means to accept. We know that sometimes when the phone rings, we answer the phone, but we may not accept the call. I know uh, Brother Muhammad is familiar with that, but when we were doing prison services, we just get a lot of the calls that we didn't accept. So we are translate this surah. Now, I'm not... Uh, an authority on Arabic or anything like that. But we want to translate this surah, this ayah rather, to read like this. Of those who accepted the call of Allah and the Apostle, even after being wounded, those who do right and refrain from wrong have a great reward. Now this ayah that we are reading is pertaining to answering or accepting the call to go to war. A physical war. In fact, it's referring to the Battle of Badr. But what I'm trying to do here with this Agat, brothers and sisters, is to see if it won't apply to the war that we have been fighting for the last 11 months. What did our Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say about the, the major jihad? He said that the battle that we fight within our own selves is the major jihad. And for 11 months, we've been battling with the shaitan, and we feel wounded. By wounded, I mean a part of us has been violated. Our spirit has been violated. So why do you think that many of us are eager now to begin this month of Ramadan? It's because our spirit needs to be repaired. Our souls have been under extreme pressure. And we felt wounded. We felt wounded spiritually. Now I'm speaking for myself and I know how I feel. And Allah knew that we were all going to feel like this. And that's why he has prescribed this month of Ramadan as a month wherein we fast. And we know that when Ramadan comes, Allah will heal our wounds and make our souls strong again. In the Holy Quran, we want to read from Surah 3. And we're going to read Ayats 123 through 126. And Allah helped you at Bada when you were a contemptible little force. Then fear Allah. Thus may ye show your gratitude. This ayat is showing us that Allah will help me and you when we feel all alone, when we think that we are being surrounded with no help in sight. Then ayat 124, remember, thou sayest to the faithful, is it not enough for you that Allah shall help you with 3,000 angels specially sent down? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, is all the help that we need to overcome the shaitan. But then he will send angels to help us also. 
and I at 125? Yea, if ye remain firm and act aright, even if the enemy should rush here on you in hot haste, your Lord would help you with 5,000 angels making a terrific onslaught. It says that when the enemy continues to come, to come at us, but we are firm in our faith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase our help from 3,000 to 5,000 angels. In 126, Allah made it but a message of hope for you and an assurance to your hearts. In any case, there is no help except from Allah, the exalted, the wise. Allah is always there to help his faithful servants. And at all times, Allah has missioned angels on errands of mercy and blessings for the believers. Now, just for a side note, the Battle of Bada was fought on the 17th of Ramadan. During this month, I pray that all of us will be seeking and asking Allah's help in our major jihad, which is to overcome the wiles of the shaitan. In Ramadan, during the daylight hour that we have said we don't take in food or drink, we willingly give up the food of this world for a different food. In the Bible, in St. Luke, fourth chapter, in the fourth verse, it is reported that Jesus said this, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So, while the world is feeding on chicken and beans and peas, Muslims are being fed from the words of God. We say that Allah is always there to help the believers. How does he help the believers? One way is that in Surah 2 and 185, we are told this. Ramadan is the month in which was sent down the Quran as a guide to mankind. Also clear signs for guidance and judgment between right and wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the Quran was sent down in Ramadan to give us guidance. And we know that we cannot manage this life on our own. So we ask Allah to make our lives what he wants them to be. And the Quran will, will guide us to what Allah wants for us in our life. So now we read more excessively to become what Allah wants of us. O oh Allah, I seek your guidance in my choice by virtue of your knowledge, and I seek ability from you by virtue of your power. I ask you of your great favor, for you have power, but I have none, and you know, but I know not, and you are the knower of the unseen. Amen. Alhamdulillah, 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 Rabbil Alameen. As we know, brothers and sisters, Ramadan is a great blessing for the Muslim. But this great blessing can only be manifested if we appreciate this month. Because if we don't show our appreciation for Ramadan, it will have come and gone and we will not have gained anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the Quran as a guide for us during this month so that we might be grateful. In Hadith, we are told that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this, Whoever lessens the burden of his servants in this month, Allah will forgive him and free him from the fires of hell. Now, one example of lessening the burdens of Allah's servant is through the zakat to a fitra that we pay during Ramadan. 
This form of zakat is given to those in need to lessen the burden and the financial uh, strife that they may be experiencing during this month, especially during this month when people have lost their jobs and what have you, and uh, they don't know how they're going to make ends meet. To lessen any financial burden that some of our brothers and sisters may be experiencing, we are asking the believers to pay the zakat to fitra way before the day of Eid. We do not want the believers who are to receive these funds to come to the Eid prayer with a burden on them. We want them to come to the prayer without any burden at all to feel free of any hardship. There are six things about which care should be taken while we're fasting. One, we should keep the eyes away from any place or anything where one should not be looking. Our Prophet said, whoever out of regard for Allah prevents himself or herself from looking at evil, Allah shall grant him or her such faith, the sweetness of ecstasy of which he will feel in he will feel in his or her heart. Two, guarding the tongue against lies, gossip, backbiting, arguing, and swearing. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the worst form of evil is slandering a Muslim. Three, the ears should be kept away from listening to anything that's maruk, which means anything disliked, disapproved of, abhorred, or detested. Four, the rest of the body should keep away from sin and evil. Hands shouldn't touch it, the feet should not walk towards it, and the stomach should not be filled with food that is, doubt, that is doubtful as to whether it is haram or halal. Five, and after fasting, the stomach should not be filled with food, even halal food, because this will defeat the object of the fast. Number six, one should fear as to whether or not his or her fast has been accepted by Almighty God. So, we should do everything in our powers, brothers and sisters, to adhere to the disciplines of the faith. And we should have such reverence for Ramadan that Ramadan should be loved and appreciated and not dreaded. Our prophet had said this, if Mauma would realize what Ramadan really is, they would wish that the whole year should just be Ramadan. So let's keep the faith. Let's keep the spirit of Ramadan as long as we can by feeding on the words of God every day. Now, because of the times that we're living in right now, I want to end with this reminder. In the Holy Quran, in Surah 4, and Ayat is 81, Allah says this, وَتَوَقُّ اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا And put that trust in Allah. And enough is Allah for a disposal of affairs. This word, tawak, is a word that means trust. But this word is used when we are talking about having trust in Almighty God. We know that in the Hadith we are told that the man came to the prophet and he asked the prophet, he said, should I tie my camel and then have to walk him? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the man, have to walk in Allah, have trust in Allah, and then tie your camel. Allah, even in these trying times, is still God, and he's still in charge. So we put our trust in him, and we still tie our camel. 
by following the advice that has been given to us by our health care professionals. Now for announcements. We here at the, at the Mass Gym are here three days a week to take donations, to issue papers, and to help in any way that we can with things that the believers may uh, 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 be questioning or asking about. We're here on Wednesdays from 12.30 to 1.30, on Fridays from 12.30 to 1.30, and on Sundays from 12 to 1.30. So you can feel free to come by here, pick up your papers, make your donations, and offer the salat. Now, Ramadan has begun. Beginning tomorrow at 2 o'clock Florida time, 1 o'clock our time, Imam Yahya Abdullah out of Jacksonville, Florida, will be conducting a Ramadan session on uh, uh, Facebook Live. Okay, you can go to uh, Masjid W D Muhammad, uh, Jacksonville, Florida, and tune in to the Ramadan session by Imam Yahya Abdullah. Now, those sessions will be every weekend during the month of Ramadan, Saturdays and Sundays. And when you tune in, he will give you the schedule for those days as to when he will be uh, holding sessions. And to top it off, each night on those two days, he is going to lead the Tower Wheel Prayer via uh, Facebook Live. So those are the announcements that I have right now. But you can always call the Masjid or you can call myself or you can call the imam and he we will try to guide you in the right direction as to what it is that is concerning you at that particular time so let us pray O oh Allah, truly i take refuge in you from associating anything with you that i am aware of O oh Allah, lord of our prophet muhammad forgive me my sins root out the rancor of my heart and save me from all trials that call people to go astray. Amen. Amen. The comedy salah.